How's everyone this evening? I gotta ring a bell. Yeah. 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 I'm just <laughs> ready. Roger gets us a song here. We'll be ready to go. Do what? Has anyone heard of Samarco? Yes, you will call. I called and talked to Beverly last part of last week. She said he's doing okay. He said the kids are a little sick. He's got to take these treatments for a while. I haven't talked to him since uh, he was taking some of the treatments, but he's pretty much got his brain down. And they take him in to take the uh, radiation, so I'm sure he's. Yeah, that radiation on your head, that, that's weird anyway. They, they make a mask. That, yeah, he was telling me about it. Well, it, Amy did the same thing. They had that mask for her and stuff. But uh, she's a lot younger. Yeah, women's usually better off. Yeah. 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 We have other people than Roger now. So they they go go a little tough, Roger. Well, you got a little tough. Three twenty two in the red book. Three twenty two. Hey, how you doing? Oh, no. You ready? You? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we ready for the back <laughs> okay. I felt like. Vince Gill. Yeah, you hear what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> no, not Vince Gill. Never. <laughs> I said there's a lot of good songs in that book, but nobody don't call. Mm -hmm. Hi. Oh! 
surgery tomorrow. They're going in there and take out some more stones. And if they cannot reach the stone that was in there before, they're going to have to operate on him through his back. And then after that, it's not going to count for Just for rehab, right? All right. Did she give a time or anything on the She surgery? said they didn't know really if it was going to be early in the morning or uh, in the afternoon, but it's, it is going to be tomorrow. I thought they took out two and we had one that they couldn't reach. But she said, I guess there's more in there. But if they don't take out the one in the through the back, it is the one that's causing the infection. Prayer for the Blackwell Chapter family. And I requested prayer on Sunday for the mother and the baby that was in the wreck. The baby died. Uh, the mother is still 15 months old, right? facing several surgeries. Anyone else? <laughs> Our son Gary. <laughs> Always My remember our church. We need to pray for our church, guys. We, our church, our crowd is down. We just, we got to get people back in our church. Should have mentioned Pauline. She fell the other night by the hospital. Oh. The other day, they had, they took her to the emergency room to have a uh, MRI on her head, and she hit her head real hard. They said they threw it out the car. She got tangled up in putting an air mattress for Carl when she was helping the little girl. I don't think she got tangled up in the car. Anyone else? Your prayer request? <laughs> I'm sorry. Any unspoken? Remember my name. She's having a hard time right now. Man, you go up there and help him up when they get done for you. I will. I'm going to help her up. Man, I'm going to go up there and help him all up. Yeah, I'm going to go up there and help him all up.
Anybody have anything they'd like to say for the Lord this evening? <laughs> Anybody else? Just thank him for this good place to be this evening, you know, to be here with with our brothers and sisters and be able to just praise his name, praise his holy name. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? I just want to thank him this evening because it's been so good to me to have him in the prayers of the first one that I will answer and pray for soul. Back in the church one more time. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Well, it's good to be in the house of the Lord. You know, we sit in church and we listen to the preaching and God's Word. You know, that's important tonight. God is God. He does just what He says He's going to do. You know, when He led the children of Israel out of Egypt. They all died in the wilderness up to Germany when they went across the border. God caused them all to die. And I thought with Moses up on the mount there, when they started making them molten things for that calf to worship, God caused the ground to open up and swallow a bunch of that True. And I was reading in Ezekiel this morning. Just how God does things. You know, he sent the word down to Ezekiel there. And he said, you go tell Israel what I'm going to do. They were just a small remnant of Israel who escaped. The rest of them were killed by the sword, pestilence, and famine. Wiped them out. That's why I said, you know, people say God's too merciful to do this. But Roy says to many times, they the judgment of that coming. There's going to be a fire out there that's going to burn everybody up that hasn't stood for Jesus Christ. That's what it's going to be. And God, when it comes to killing people and destroying them out of his way, he don't care. You know, we belong to him. We were paid for with a price. And I thought when I was reading that, here we are, the new Israel, worshiping Jesus Christ. And that's where our country stands today. It's almost in the same shape it was when Sodom and Gomorrah was wiped out. So, you know, I don't feel like it's too long until the Lord's going to come back and he's going to clean this place up. Fire and brimstone. The earth is going to melt one of these True. days. It's going to burn. You know, I think much, you know. It, I just want to serve the Lord tonight. I got to stand for me. Like the song says, I'll face nobody's record but mine. And that would be a God's plenty right there. You know, I don't want no small dot on no paper to stand against me. I want to do all my doing up right now. You know, I want my good works to fall around me. I don't want them, and my bad ones, I want them to go ahead and have them be done away with, you know. I want to live my life, like I said, good works behind me. I want to live my life when I die. People can remember what I was and how I lived, how I stood for Jesus Christ. Now that there is a good record. I wouldn't want to be thought of if somebody stayed drunk all the time, laid out there some more or another, and never tried to do anything. But that's not a good record to follow. But I want to hold myself up before Jesus Christ. And I said to many times, he's the author and the finisher of our faith tonight. You know, he's the man that died on the cross. He's the man that raised again from the dead. He's the one that sent it into heaven and sat on the right hand of God tonight. So, Amen. You know, he has power tonight. He has power. And he's supposed to be the head of the church. We've got to keep him right up there. We can't keep him on the cross because he's alive tonight. But I'm telling you one thing. We better keep him up there in the head of the church and let him lead him because that's what keeps us from going straight. Pray for us. Anyone else? I don't want everybody to jump up at once, okay? <laughs> <laughs> okay, if nothing else, I'll get through.
Enjoy. Oh, roll. <laughs> Mentioned on the Sunday or Wednesday service, I'm not sure which one it was, and I read something out of the Old Testament concerning the husband and the wife. <laughs> no, I'm not going to go that route again. I ain't got to. agreement that there. But I remember right off the bat, if I use that term correctly, Nancy, and I'm not saying that to be negative or anything, that's in the Old Testament. So I'm going to compare a couple of things with the Old Testament and the New Testament when I get started. First of all, there's a comparison in the sequence. The Old Testament represents the law. God had to give thee, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not lie. None of those don't change. It's still the law today. You see what I mean? God created man out of the dust of the ground, but through that birth of the male, the female, the generations, the other man, the second man, is Jesus Christ. In the Old Testament, there was Adam. In the New Testament, there's Jesus Christ. In the Old Testament, Adam sinned. In the New Testament, Jesus never sinned. In the Old Testament, there was not a day that the Spirit of God ascended up on everyone as it did in the New Testament in the day of Pentecost. So this is a New Testament because there's a New Testament. The Old Testament is described to be the schoolmaster for us to learn so there was the law, and now we live by grace, and by grace is saying, no, you can break the law. That's not what he's saying. The wages of sin is death under the law, but the gift of God is eternal life under grace. There's so many comparisons to, and if you read the Bible very much and you really try to get real close in, in the, the law of Moses, he was saying, Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not lie. But then when you get over into Matthew chapter 5, and he starts talking about being blessed, he says, Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be. You see the difference? And you read chapter 5, Jesus is saying, they, meaning us, are the future of people. So when Moses is given the law, he's saying, thou shalt not kill, steal, lie, covet. And then Jesus is given the, in the New Testament that, blessed are the merciful, for they shall, they shall obtain mercy. You see the difference in the direction of, of the law and grace. So I want to take you to Matthew here, chapter 9. Chapter 9. I want you to read verse 16. in different ways, but I want you, and sometimes, you know, I can't say that anyone is specifically correct or wrong, but, but what he's saying, if you have an old garment and you put it on a new piece of material, it's going to show up. Or if you put a new piece, I'm sorry, on an old garment, then it's going to be obviously seen, right? Now, I relate to that when I was a, a young boy. Mom, back then, uh, you wore your britches out, and they were called britches. They weren't stout or designer 
with holes and already cut in them, we wore the knees out of our britches. And they patched them. And you can see that patch on those knees, iron on they call it. And then when the hole was big, she would put the iron on patch on the inside so the glue wouldn't stick on your knee, Danny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. just bobbing that head yeah. like a bobber on a dash of a car. Yeah. And now, <laughs> crazy. <laughs> but it was obvious that you couldn't put. So here's what he's saying now. This is highlighted in the Bible as new. When you put the new, you relate it to the old, but we live in the new. You need to see the new, okay? But you can't live under the law, and I don't want to say break the law. When you live under grace, you live under grace. You see what I mean? You can't put here in the next verse new wine in an old flask or an old container or an old flask by things what they're saying because the new wine will ferment while it's in the old piece of leather or the old flask or whatever they carry it in and it will burst it. You see what I mean? Now that doesn't mean the new spirit in the old body. You can't take this Old Testament and fulfill it. Look, there are so many people that are still living by tradition of men, not by the Spirit of God. We cannot live by the tradition of men because Jesus Christ came not to change but to fulfill. Remember eating the showbread? Remember when he was in the garden? And remember what debate he had on Sunday or on the Sabbath day? Oh, you can't work on Sabbath, but if your ox is in the ditch, you're going to pull it out. But you're telling me you can't do work on the Sabbath, but you priests and all you people will get together and make a big array of it. And he, he was in a complete, so we live in the new, okay? No, you shouldn't kill, steal, lie. True. So let's look backwards or forward to Mark chapter 2. <laughs> the same verse. Somebody read verse 22.
But and if you sin, you have an advocate with the Father. And he said the same thing on the Sabbath day. Now who, in verse 23, he comes to the Sabbath day and they begin to pluck the cord. And who does he see? I'm going to tell you how the tradition and some of the older people continue and combat it with the Word of God. Jesus is the Word of God and people argued and discussed and tried to find things wrong with him and God said he was his son and that he never sinned. And people argued with him. Tried to debate him. Tried to find fault in him. A perfect man. So if you think for one minute you're going to preach the gospel, sing a song, or live in this world as a Christian that somebody is not going to persecute you, you're fooling yourself. Blessed are you when you're persecuted and for his name's sake, for yours shall be the kingdom of heaven. Shall not. You shall not. But you shall inherit the kingdom of heaven. So here, and the Pharisee said to him, Behold, why do they on the Sabbath day that which is not what? Lawful. He said, have you never read that David did when he was in need and he was hungry and they that were with him, he had the military, the people that had fought him. They'd been in battle and they'd entered into the uh, house, the tabernacle, the priest, and they eat the shoe bread. They was hungry. He said, didn't you read about that? David, he went into the house of the Lord and eat the shoe bread. And he said to them, The Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. Therefore the Son of Man is Lord also of the Sabbath. So, a publican, let me give you a little history on that. It's pretty simple. The publican is the tax collector. Okay? But this came down from Rome when Caesar said, everybody's going to be taxed, okay? So then at the entrance of certain areas and districts, they had people appointed to take up the tax. They were publicans. And these publicans were designated in an area to set at a certain entrance to a city, and the tax was to go to Rome, right? So the publicans are the ones so they became also a little bit greedy when the person paid their taxes they might pocket just a little bit you see but it was not lawful so then Jesus he's accused of eating with publicans and sinners who accused him of? The Pharisees. Now, what about the Pharisees? Very religious people, right? You think that religion is highly noted today versus salvation? They're a very religious person. Well, he was the one believing the resurrection, right? Yes. Pharisees did. Sadducees. The Sadducees didn't believe. But let me let me say this. The scribes, you read about scribes. Do you know what the scribes were? They were people that kept books of history. And they also investigated things. So remember when uh, Herod told the uh, Told the wise men, said, You uh, read up on this. And he asked the scribes, He said, Tell me what this is about Jesus. And they read it up in Matthew and they said, Well, this son shall be born of the Virgin Mary. They had the history of it, it was, it was in the Bible here. Look it up, I don't want to lose, lose track. Here in chapter 2 of Matthew, 
Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, I mean, Matthew chapter 2, Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star from the east. We've come to worship him. So Herod the king had heard these things. He was troubled. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. So he's going into history. And he's saying now, Herod, this child's born. Here's the wise men. You go look, you priests, you, you scribes, and all you historians. Go tell me. Find out where he's going to be born. And they said to him in Bethlehem of Judea. You know where it was born? Bethlehem of Judea. If they just someone else deceives the church so bad, they come as a great Messiah, or they come as someone that God sent. And if I'm going to tell you, there's one being born in Bethlehem of Judea, and the rest of them that's born anywhere else, they ain't a bit more Christ. There's nobody else except Jesus Christ. He's the one. Born in Bethlehem of Judea. So the historians here verified it. And Herod tried to kill him and, and all those things are what the Bible says. Why do we have to turn to another book, another Bible, another book of some sort? Uh, I like history. I, I mean, I'm not real good buff at it, but I like looking up things to see what the meanings are a little bit further. So you've got the Pharisees and you've got the Sadducees and the scribes and the sinners. <coughs> Jesus is the one who told them the truth, Roger. Jesus is the one who came to the world. And he's the one that ate with them. He sat down with them. But he always told the truth. Yeah, Herod was afraid of him. You know, you're the, you're the baby supposed to be born king of the Jews all this, but he, he had it in the wrong place. He wasn't going to be king like him. He was going to be king over a different kind of a nation. There. There's so many stories that have evolved from the church. The Pharisees, they love to be in upper chambers, upper rooms, dress eloquently, and give long speeches. They said they even went in and had prayers, long prayers with the widows and, and tried to extortion people. Religion. Do you see a lot of difference in today than people? I, I said to the wife today, I said, there's another, I've seen another billionaire, uh, Sarfus, don't remember the name. He's worth five billion four hundred million. And then somebody comes on and says, we need $19 a month to feed the dogs and the cats. And that is sad. Don't get me wrong. I, I, I wouldn't mistreat a pet. Uh, I don't think you ought to be cruel to any animal or people. And then these billionaires are going to tell you how much they're going to help us. But they want the people that are meek, lowly in heart, to send $10 to the politician $20 for them to run and they're millionaires anyway. Well, I can make sure you do. <laughs> Have you ever eaten one? I can't eat one. <laughs> Have you eaten a cow? I have. Do you eat meat? Do you eat meat? Well, it has babe. to be killed, don't you? Ever seen slaughter a pig? Bacon. So you can't kill it, but you can eat it. You know what the Bible says? Kill and eat. Well, if you can't eat it, you can't eat it. Don't kill it. <laughs> no, don't. <laughs> don't kill it. You and, you and Gary are going to have y'all's first dividing words here. <laughs> I'll tell you the easiest way to kill a deer anymore is put your lights on high beam, turn your radio up, and drive down the interstate. 70 mile an hour, you'll get one. <laughs> you know what I get joy out of? Even the birds. <coughs> Boy, they can eat a lot more. <laughs> uh, 
So here we are. We live in this New Testament, right? Though we use the old often, maybe in a message or in our learning of our history, we live in the New Testament, right? Yeah, but we still have to hold up things back out of the old Bible, too. You know, I agree. Adam died, right? How old was he? I think 890. I may have misquoted that number. Adam was 800 plus years old and he died. And he still did. Well, what age you got bald head? You <laughs> 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 didn't have any hair in 800 plus years old. How you know? Because he's probably done pulled it all out. <laughs> oh my gosh. Look at me and Chad, what we got to do. It runs in the family, girl. I'm just going to need somebody to take his home. <laughs> Jesus also died, right? Yeah. Adam was buried. Adam's dead. Jesus is alive. So we under the old? No, we live under the new, right? So we preach or we talk about a resurrection of the dead and the ascension of Jesus into heaven. Let's go to Acts chapter 2. This day of Pentecost has come and gone. And it has left a significant value to you in the church. And it's called the Holy Ghost. It's the Holy Spirit of God that should be in your life. And it's been 930 years. 930? I was only off 40, 50 years ago. 930. All those old people like that lived to 900 and some years, but there was nobody lived to be a thousand. Yeah, you might get a chance in the millennial. <laughs> That'd be a good subject. I don't know why they didn't live to be a thousand. Yeah, I'll, I'll really. That is what it was. Me away. Be so long. <laughs> no, I don't think I'll be there. <laughs> hey, I'm going to live forever. Die mm trying. -hmm. That's a good one. Well, I hope to live forever, too. Maybe it will be another thousand years. Well, this is what I'm saying compared to the law and grace. Jesus Christ, we have to come to believe what the New Testament, what was outlined and prophesied about Jesus Christ, being born, being crucified, being buried. People, this Holy Spirit will come into your life when you believe this and acknowledge it. When you really live in this grace dispensation of, I believe that Jesus died for my sins, and we get into a debate about uh, another thousand years and all these things that I'll just tell you are over my head, but nothing will ever convince me any other than God is God, that he sent his son, that I have to repent of my sins because he died for them. This is just the foundation of the truth of what Jesus was saying. He lives, and because he lives, you live also. And it's what the Bible tells us, not a supplemental read of book. This is what the Bible tells us, that he ascended with a promise to give us a comforter, right? Yeah. A promise. You can't hardly get people to tell you all and repent anymore at all. And I do it every day. I don't have no trouble with it. I, I would say there's a lot of people here that... Lord, if I've sinned, forgive me. If I've said, but you're accountable for what you know. If you know you've sinned, you need to ask God to forgive you. 
And if you think you've sinned or offended someone, you need to ask God to forgive you. That's just, and it's so simple. But you need to ask him to receive it. Bible, right? Jesus said, ask and you shall receive, right? <laughs> you have to believe in him to ask him. Now here on the day of Pentecost, those that were tarrying in Acts 1 and waiting for the promise, they were there for a reason. They believed it was coming. And when it came to the church, and it filled the Holy, they were filled with the Holy Ghost. Do we get filled half empty, half busy about something else? Or are we filled? The more I read it, the more I'm filled. The more I, the more I read it, I'm, the more I'm filled. Because it takes all those other worries and places in life and your man that imagines so much, it takes that out and puts that in. If I could only imagine. Now, in verse 13, when they began to speak in other tongues and all the people of all these other nations understood, here's what they thought. Verse 13. Those mocking said, it is a new oil, new wine. Well, I agree, it is a new wine. <coughs> it's a new testament. That's what it is. You know, a new wine, and I looked that up a little bit, back during the age of wine, history has fermented a different way, aged wine a different way, some is made stronger. Now look, you got Boone's Farm and, and Mad Dog 2020, and, <laughs> and uh, you want to name a few more for me, Amanda? Well. I'm just kidding you. <laughs> And then you've got red wine and grape wine. So this is what he's saying. While they were fermenting, there comes some, maybe they got hold of some new wine, something else that's got them all drunk. You see what it was? But you know what it was, what it is? It's the Spirit of God. It's going to make you move and have your being if you're filled up, if you're full up. If you get filled up and you put it in there, you're going to you're going to tell you're going to tell somebody about. It. it may not be in the church, but you're going to tell somebody about. It. If it's in there, you're going to tell somebody about it. You're going to tell somebody. Well, I tell you about that Holy Spirit. I went to a funeral Monday when my cousin Joel died. <coughs> Larry was talking to her, I talked to her, and he said, well, I'm sitting here going through all these CDs trying to find some songs for you out there. And he told this out there in the funeral after he got done. It really fell on me. I mean, it fell on me to help him. Did you ever feel like that? With some people. Well, and I called him back the next day, and I said, Larry, if you want me to, I'll try to sing a song for you. Well, and then they asked me to sing, too. You know, he said, I prayed and prayed about this. You know, what to do? And that funeral worked out so smooth. I, I the smoothest funeral I ever seen. And how it worked out. But the Lord took care of it. Amen. Now, God can work things out if we'll just listen to him. Well, that's the Holy Spirit right there. The first message after the day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit came was in verse 14. The same Peter that denied him. Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell in Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. These are not drunken, as you suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. 
But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And if you look back into the prophet of Joel, this was prophesied that this day would come. That's why we preach out of the old to bring it to the new. That's why we preach the Old Testament. You see, Moses, when he came through the sea with the children of Israel, that was called the baptism of, of uh, the when they uh, came out of Egypt, okay? <clears throat> but they never got wet. They went through the water, right? Dry land. For us, our baptism is baptized in the water. Why? You can't breathe underwater. You put the old man down and bring the new man up. He dies to sin. He comes up to life everlasting. But I believe you got to live it. Now, I just tell you, I, I just believe you got to live it. I'm not going to judge anyone, but I'm not in this to satisfy myself. I think the, the closer you live, the happier you are. I don't think I know. The, the less you do in the world as far as anything sinful, you're a happier person. Just stay out of trouble. Don't get out of trouble. I learned that. So this Holy Spirit, I ask you, I ask you deep, when, when we take a communion, he says to take a look at ourselves. You know, I need to examine, examine myself before I take that communion. That's to make me a better person. I'm saying this to you, church. I don't know. I don't see a falling away. You, you're, you're concerned about the church and the numbers and you know what I'm concerned about is people being lost. Mm -hmm. Now, people may think, and I hope I haven't preached up, people may think that I don't have to go or it's not important, but I'll say this. Seven days without prayer makes one week. Mm -hmm. W-E-A-K. Very weak. And if you're not assembled with your brothers or you don't feel fellowship with people who you think have the Spirit of God in your life, you better find some place where you do. I, I'm serious. Find somewhere, find somewhere where God's going to, where, where you feel like, you know, this is, if, I, I'm not asking anybody to leave, but if I'm not doing the job, get somebody that will. Because I'm going to tell you the truth. If you don't repent, you're going to be likewise. You're going to perish. That's pretty hard preaching. I don't expect to ever stand in the auditorium like some of the famous people and ask you for money or stand down here in some football field and have all these millions of people or thousands or hundreds of people. But I'll tell you one thing. I believe I'm going to tell you the truth. Unless you repent, you'll likewise perish. And yes, I hope the scribes, the Pharisees, the sinners, the Baptists, the Methodists, let God be their judge, and people will come to church to come to church. Okay. And I'll say this to y'all that go out and tell your family or your friends. The wages of sin is death. And if you think you're going to sin... And have eternal life, you better get some new wine. You better get the spiritual wine about you. I don't know why the spirit in you. Look, those people that can sing gospel songs that make gospel groups sound bad. But if their heart's in it, you see what's going to count? If your heart's in it, do you really believe it? I tell you, I just don't. And the experiences that I've had, 
just makes it better and better for me. He always comes through. Mm -hmm. There's ways and times I've thought about getting even in my Christian life with somebody and, and God always works it out that I don't have to do a thing on my own. He always works it out. I'll get a little puffed up with somebody and think I'm going to say this or do that. And, and you know God works it out. I don't have to say a thing. He takes care of it all. They apologize and go deep, I'll tell you that. Not only for sinners going up there and repenting. That stands for Christians too. I've apologized to people for just to keep peace. Amen. You have to. But the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is what keeps you from leaving here and going across that road over there. Or dream that keeps you from doing it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm telling you, how many, how many times that I'd have never passed a beer joint until I repented. I'm not here to tell you about myself. You can tell me stories, and it's your testimony. You know, the Apostle Paul, he repeated his more than once. He told about his conversion, how he was Saul, changed to Paul. He told often about his conversion, being on the road to Damascus. We've all got one. Have you got an actual, an actual testimony of being converted? And the Lord Jesus Christ coming into your life. That's when you get that spirit in you. You got that I remember when the Lord saved me, it felt like somebody lifted 500 tons off my shoulder. Amen. Praise the Lord. It really did. Praise the Lord. I was under a big load. Uh, <laughs> when I was saved, he was going home and was leaving me at church. He wasn't even taking me home with him. Actually, it was just like somebody built up a big block wall. Or something like that. He just got in the car with me. Get it down the road. Am I even saved? The late I was saved. The late you Because I was saved before he was. Maybe <laughs> <laughs> I love to hear it. <laughs> I was walking, I felt like I was walking about this high. And, then you had and I was so happy. They said, there goes Roger. <laughs> well, I'm walking so high, I'm going to walk home now. <laughs> no, somebody would have took me home. But, you know, he said, when we got home, I said, why did you go off and leave me like that? And he said, you just put a brick wall up between us. Huh. Yeah. That's what I thought. And I was just so happy you really didn't even bother me. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I had, like he said, I had a weight lifted off of me, and I just felt free as a bird. Can you, re can you feel that conversion? Now your mind, you see, when we, when we feel that, the Lord truly saved me. I know he saved me from my sins. Run down your arm. That's right. Feel it all over. You know, they say it's better felt than told. I love it both. Feel it, tell it. You know what's good when that when that weight was lifted off me and I know that I've been saved? That wall was broke down. It was gone. Oh, didn't he tell me how much he loved me? <laughs> Boy, you had a new tongue, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> Changed greatly. How long after you were saved before Roger was saved? A couple of days. A couple of days. Yeah, but boy, he was. How about you, Chubb? He was. Huh? Yeah. How'd you get started? I was like, I didn't even exist. Yeah. Wait a prayer at church, no. <laughs> Is that where you accepted the Lord? No, I was fifteen in here, but when I, I went to the door, I could say with him. I wanted to make a choice. I'm not afraid just going to Huh? I was afraid of fail. Listen to you now. Mm -hmm. He's not a failure, though. <laughs> Falling and failing is different. Yeah, fail is when you sit on your seat and won't move when the Lord wants you to. <laughs> well, if he don't want you to, or if he wants you to, That's what I'm but what about your conversion? Now, you all probably, by the Holy Spirit, have felt this Holy Spirit in your life just tonight. 
because you're mine. But if you don't have that feeling of conversion, you don't have it. If you can't think when you come to the Lord, maybe not the day, the hour. Some people know the moments, the day, the hour. But I know when I was converted, I know. I know when I was converted. Nothing like that feeling. When Bless you. Comes in your life. Bless you. You feel like a new person all over. Bless you. You are a new person. Yeah, you all are. It's just like you just go. It's you do everything. Well, it's like you feel good. It feels good. <laughs> <laughs> like you put a big weight off of you. Hey, the new creature out of you, did Oh, I can tell you some stories, but. Uh, my conversion, I had, had a big change. Yeah, but he had you right there where he wanted you. You flat on your back and head like that. <laughs> you done run as far as you could run. He laid me out. Long time. Long time. I slept with this on my chest, and I read this thing. Not this one. This is, I think, the third one I wore. And I got a fourth one on the desk right now I'm wearing it to break my knee in the fifth one. But uh, I just wouldn't sleep without. I just wouldn't when I I, I couldn't get up. <coughs> couldn't get around. I read this and want nothing else. But I finally said, Lord, if you're real, if this this is you, I believe. He let me know. It's real. Didn't have to ask nobody else, did you? Didn't have to ask nobody else. I know it was real. And it's real. From two hours of a death sentence to look at me now. That's where it come from. It didn't have to come from nobody either. Lake Park sell a different than you when you start well, going to church. I had to tell a few of them not to come back. I wasn't selling nothing to them no more. I wasn't leasing no guard now. It's amazing what that spirit can do, right? I look, it, it just did it, it but what he did for me he's done for you. Mm -hmm. it, he's he's who he is. It, I think the hard not hard for me to live the Christian life, but convincing people to try to really biblically convince people that this is the way. Mm -hmm. This is what keeps you from being addicted. This keeps you from being an alcoholic. This keeps you, if you just press on toward the mark of a high calling, just just, just keep keep going on in this life. If you, if you could convince, but Jesus did the same, didn't he? He yeah, preached did, it. Did All you right. ever just stop and think? I'll put it this way. Me and Larry always kids and tell people we just like about that much being family. Because his family married into my family and all this. But did you ever just stop and think? We call each everybody brothers and sisters. But me and you are blood brothers through Jesus Christ. True. Blood brothers. True. That's just as close as you can get it. I just, uh, I know it's real. I know it's real. I uh, just recently, and, and I'm not going to, you've probably all got different stories, but I had the, the railroad company here, Lord, it's been months and months ago, a tree fell across the track, and the guy comes with the railroad company, cuts the tree up, throws it on the bike, over there where I have to look at it every day. And it just laid there and laid there, so the guy comes by on the, I flagged him down, I said, brother, I said, uh, I need you to you don't care to cut this tree off this bank. I said, I pay people to pick the garbage up and stuff, but I said, I can't move that tree. And okay, he said, I'll, I'll call somebody. A few days later, he comes back a second time. I said, buddy, did you ever talk to anybody about cutting these trees up? Yeah, I called them. And they probably ain't going to do nothing about it. And okay. It's a process of time. And that's why I say those little things. You know, I'm out here every day and I look at this pile of rubbish, which ain't bothering me other than it's bothering me. 
So the third time he comes by, he's got two men with him. I flag him down again. Buddy, when are you going to clean this brush up? Can't you get somebody to do it? I said, I want the name of a supervisor so I can call him. He said, I am the supervisor. <laughs> and he said, I'm not going to move that pile of brush. Now, we didn't use any vulgar language. But I let him know I thought he was lazy. I didn't, I wasn't, you know, but it bothered me. So, this has gone on now for months, all right? And I'm just telling you how it can, you know, aggravate you. So, here come two guys that I know in Cedar Grove. They ain't got nothing for, bless their hearts. And the guy said, you got any work? I said, yeah. I said, Who's that there? He said, that's my cousin. I said, I'm going to give you all $20 to move a brush pile across the other side of the road. Now listen. Now in this midst of time, I thought, I'm going to go up there and I'm going to stop that guy. I'm going to pile that brush up there. I'm going to put a sign up there that says, you're lazy, you're a supervisor, you know how to work. All this is going through my mind, and that's not spiritual, okay? So I says, hmm, okay, buddy. I'm going to give y'all $20 and I'm going to move that brush pile of the entire road pile. So they come down. The two of them can't move this one big log. So here old stupid he is. <laughs> up here trying to help them. Now I'm just telling you how the Lord works. We're up here with this log across the track. <coughs> Who comes by? <laughs> the supervisor. It says, I'm not going to move that long path. He gets out and he says, I got a chainsaw. <laughs> I said, buddy. I didn't recognize him at first. I said, the supervisor that I talked to said, he wasn't going to move this long path. And I don't want you to get in trouble when I looked up. And I'm thinking, Man, this is him. <laughs> <laughs> the same guy that I'm thinking of how I don't like him and he's lazy gets a chainsaw, cuts the tree, and we move it on before it's all over, I shook his hand. <laughs> Instead of putting a sign on the wall that says, you're lazy, you're no good, you're a supervisor, I ended up shaking his hand. Now, the Lord works in mysterious ways. Yeah. So who did it aggravate? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was there so I <laughs> Stuff like that aggravated. <laughs> but you see, there's a test and there's a trial out there for you. And don't think that God is not in those arrangements for you to do what's right. And plus, I'd vent to her and she just <laughs> but then when I come in, I said, Guess who moved that log back? Guess who helped me? The very guy. So, does anything hang over your head that just aggravates you? Yeah, I got one right now. Huh? I got one right now. <laughs> Do you believe that the Lord is in the arrangement? Well, I hope so, because my car drags every time I go in my driveway. <laughs> now the state comes through there and cut the ditches out. <laughs> and now I know why I brought that out, and God bless you. <laughs> I know a guy that's got a chainsaw. Oh my God. It won't cut dirt. <laughs> yes, he's been telling me about that every day. For it's a week. Like that we <laughs> God bless y'all. This is one of those times I can say, I know how you feel. Yeah, I got a bad it. <laughs> Sunday evening. I hope, I know other people have plans Sunday evening. There'll be church here at 7 o'clock. With the best intentions, unless something comes up, the laborers will be here. Oh, good. Oh, now, he's going to confirm that Thursday evening for me. I've talked to him. He said he hadn't got hold of one part. Well, Mr. Cantley lives up here. He sings with them now. Yeah, 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 yeah. He sings with them now. So, Lord willing, they have that open day. He said they'd like to come down and 
So if all works out well, they'll be here. Now he may say, I just can't get them together. They had other plans, but we'll see. And then we'll see about what you bring to the church. Bring your friends, bring your husbands, Linda, or husband. <laughs> bring your children. I've invited my children. I'd love to see them. Just come you. and have church. I told you I was trying to get that boy of mine to come. Okay. He's welcome. He's welcome. I've even told my grandkids. I've even invited Annie out to church. I hope so. I'd love to see them. They don't have church on Sunday. If you wait till I get home and tell Pat yet, I'm going to get to hear the labor. <laughs> Mate. Let's all stand. Mate. I got to lay it on bedtime to her. Well, let's remember Carl. Yeah, I'm sure we'll make our way back down there, maybe not tomorrow, but the next day, generally when they're not scheduled for a certain time. But uh, you'll talk to Pauline. Uh, no, leave it on there. No. I really embarrassed myself when I told you to take the first part of that off. He's still. I, I told you to take it off. Well, well, you're you're good, good, baby. <laughs> I'm not yeah, sure. Yeah, but I was embarrassed. I want the world to see this. <laughs> yeah, and that part where she was going to smack him on the head, you might want to edit it too. <laughs> For the love of the church, say. <laughs> oh, boy, I love you. Uh, would you dismiss this service?